I get it, 3D printing is exciting. The ability to create an object out of thin air, printing models, tools at home, sounds amazing, doesn't it? And as technology improves, it's getting harder and harder to tell the difference between something that's 3D printed and something that's not. But if you're still on the fence about 3D printing, there's definitely some stuff you should know before you jump in, because it's definitely not for everybody. In this video, we're gonna talk about some of the pros and cons of owning a printer, as well as laying out some genuine alternatives for 3D printing stuff without a 3D printer. More about them later. Before diving into the pros and cons, let's quickly go over what a 3D printer actually is. A 3D printer is a machine that can create three-dimensional objects by adding material layer by layer. This makes 3D printers extremely versatile and capable of creating well, all sorts of stuff. The most common types of fused deposition modeling, which uses heated up and extruded plastic filament to make things, and stereolithography, or SLA printers, which use UV resin. FDM printers are less messy to use, while SLA printers can produce higher quality prints. So now you know. So what's the advantages of owning a 3D printer? Well, let's start big. When you dive into online 3D printing forums, you'll hear the owners saying things like this. It paid for itself in one print. It cost me less than a dollar to print my models. And yes, that's true. If you take out the cost of the printer and the time factor, it's much cheaper to print your own miniatures at home rather than go and buy them from a shop. Take this one, for example. To print this cost me about $8 in materials. And that's using expensive resin that costs about $70 a litre. But to buy similar in cast resin would be upwards of $80 to $100. Or if you're a war gamer, to print a force similar in points to Battletech's force packs would cost you around $5 to $8. To buy the same pack, at least five times that. And obviously you can choose the models you want to print, of course. But in my opinion, you can't remove time or let's put it another way, convenience from the equation. And with 3D printing, there's all the cleanup and chemicals to deal with, whereas the force pack, you can just take them out of the box and paint them. If you play Warhammer, the convenience is less of an argument though, because you still have to clip all the models from sprues, assemble them, and then do all the cleanup of all the mold lines and all that sort of nonsense, which on balance probably take as long or even longer than the cleanup of 3D prints. Printing is still five times cheaper though. So the cost argument is a really good one, but it's gonna come down to how much you're printing. If you're a one and done kind of guy, then spending upwards of $300 on a 3D printer isn't gonna make much sense. However, if you have multiple armies, constantly print yourself upgrade units, or maybe play regular D&D campaigns and are using it much more frequently, then all of a sudden it starts to make a lot more sense. But if the cost incentive isn't enough, one of the biggest advantages of owning a 3D printer is to have an idea, and then the very next day, hold your idea in your hands having 3D printed it at home. Have a cool idea for a D&D character? Head over to my mini factory, find an artist you like, buy the file, slap it onto your printer, print it, done. Or perhaps you need to make something useful for your office, like tidying up all your hobby clutter. Go and grab the files. These ones are actually free print it at home, and all of a sudden you've got a working pegboard. Need to expand it? That's fine, you can do that whenever you like. A 3D printer gives you the power to create anything you can imagine. The only limit is your imagination. But here's the thing, you don't need a 3D printer to have an imagination. You can still download the files you want on your computer at home. You can still make the replacement parts you need and create them at home. And when you're done, you can remove all the hassle of printing and clean up and all of that nonsense by just paying services like PCBWay to go and print it for you. I've used services like this in the past to make a one-off metal contempt to Dreadnought. Most recently though, a patron of mine needed some hobby storage for his painting setup. He reached out to me and asked me if I could print it. And I said, sure, I'll take a look. But when I dived into the files, I realized it would take me over $100 of filament plus a couple of weeks to be able to print it, which was just way too big a commitment for me. So when PCBWay emailed me and said they were interested in working together, I asked them if they'd be willing to print a paint station for my friend. They said they would, as well as covering some of the costs of making the video. And frankly, if you can't use your YouTube channel to help your community, I don't know what you can use it for. Thank you PCBWay for going the extra mile on this one. If you've never used a service like this, they're really simple. All you need to do is take your files, head to the website, and once you're there, upload and select where you want to print. Select the material. There's loads of different options. I'll show them on screen and it will give you an estimated price. A word of caution though, watch out for import taxes because I got absolutely stung on this one. Lesson learned. Once you've uploaded the files, an engineer will then take a look at them, approve them, and then it's over to final payment and then shipping. About a week later, you receive your parts. It's that easy. Even if you've got a 3D printer, 
I would probably have a look at websites like this because they are genuinely an alternative that saves quite a lot of time. But hey, now you know. In fact, this gives us a really good opportunity to talk about one of the main disadvantages of owning a 3D printer. It's about the space. More importantly, where you can store a 3D printer. I mean, physically, your typical printer will take up a couple of cubic feet. That's not too bad. But when you add in things like cleanup stations, various bits of paraphernalia, you're gonna be probably looking at a five foot by two foot table. Now, if you have a little outbuilding or a garage that you can put a table like that, that's absolutely perfect. And in fact, I would go as far as to encourage you to do that. That's a really good way to set up a 3D printing station. If though you have a 3D printer and you don't have that space, I'd encourage you to think a little harder. The obvious reason is noise. There are no such things as silent 3D printers yet. Some are very loud indeed. Imagine Robocop breakdancing in your living room while you're trying to watch Netflix and you got the idea. It's not gonna make you very popular. But more seriously, the fumes that come off 3D printers are nasty particularly resin, but also FDM printers too. There is no way you should run these machines without extraction systems, and no, sadly, opening a window is just not good enough. You can use fume cabinets or tents with extractors though if you're really dedicated to the cause. They work well, but they aren't pretty and they can be fiddly to work in. But listen, I'm not your mum. You can do what you want. But just know that resins and the VOCs from FDM printers are toxic, likely carcinogenic, and in any case, seriously not good for your health. If you don't have a dedicated ventilated space set up, you probably shouldn't be using a 3D printer somewhere you're working, eating and sleeping. Anyway, back to the fun stuff. As I said earlier, you're only really limited by your imagination and your ability to find and create the files you need. And 3D software like Blender offer the ability to make almost anything. I'm a bit crap, but even I managed to make the tip for Sanguinius' spear in Blender. And I know folks in engineering use printers to mock up prototypes, refine designs and bring products to market more quickly. How many times you had something break at home and then had to throw the entire thing away because you couldn't find a replacement part. And finally, one of the best reasons to buy a 3D printer is because it's fun. This is a hobby. You're supposed to do it for fun. Printers are tools to enable me to hobby more effectively. But there's no doubt I love digging into all the tech and the progression around that field. It's really exciting to see in just a few years how far the technology has come. Plus there's something really satisfying about just watching models create themselves out of nothing. It still feels kind of magical. But while there are many advantages to owning a 3D printer, there's some disadvantages to cost. We've spoken about how 3D printers make models cheaper, but that didn't include the price of the printer itself. And while yes, you can pick up a printer for under $100 and print decent models on it, you're unlikely to stop there. For most, a typical 3D printer will cost $400 plus, with high-end printers costing over $1,500. And that's just the beginning. There's ongoing costs for cleanup like IPA, filters, gloves, etc. And printing materials like plastic filament or resin. You'll need FEP sheets when you maintain your printer. The list goes on and on. If you're on a tight budget, as I was when I first started 3D printing, that might actually be a deal break and be the barrier that stops you 3D printing. And instead of a 3D printer churning out amazing models, you've got a very expensive, dusty paperweight. Another major barrier for 3D printing is the learning curve that goes with it, because despite the recent advances in technology, we're still not quite as a plug and play printer yet. There are things you need to learn, not least the software you need to slice your models, plus all the various settings that go with that. And if you're not particularly tech savvy, that can be a real challenge, particularly if you're using multiple different technology and multiple printers and having to swap between software around those sorts of things. And that's fun, but you just need to know. Luckily, 3D printing tech has come a long way. It's still not perfect, but a new generation machine requires less and less prior knowledge to work them. And again, while things are getting faster, 3D printing can be slow. Even a small object like this guy can take several hours to print. Larger, more complex designs take even longer. Hence, it taking two weeks to print out a painting station on an FDM printer, which seems ridiculous, but there it is. The last disadvantage for me is more esoteric. It's probably the biggest one I run into now, actually, and it's guilt. Bear with me here. 3D printing produces a lot of waste, especially if you're still learning and making mistakes. Failed prints, support structures, leftover material can add up over time and the plastic waste is, frankly, a lot. I generate a bag this size about once a month, 
but I might be printing more or less than you intend to, so use this as a gauge, not an exact amount. And don't forget that actually disposing of some of this sort of stuff, particularly liquid resins, which are incredibly toxic, is quite difficult. Technically, what you need to do is take them to your local waste disposal centre or dump, and then dispose of them properly. So getting rid of the waste that surrounds 3D printing isn't always easy or convenient. And as a result, I end up making landfill for toys. And I feel a bit guilty about that, if I'm honest. Again, I'm not about to tell you what the right answer is here. I'm just telling you how I feel about it. If you're concerned about your environmental impact already, it's something to consider. But 3D printing also has the potential to reduce waste because in theory at least, you're only printing what you need. So I reckon that about covers it for advantages and disadvantages, although if you can think of any more, do let me know in the comments below or jump onto my Discord and have a chat about it. This is fun at the end of the day. So if you're still wondering whether 3D printing is the right choice for you, then the answer is of course, it depends. I know, I'm slopey shouldered, but it's right. It's going to depend on your individual circumstances and what you decide is right. I'm just trying to lay out the facts as I see them. If you're someone who loves creating, experimenting, trying new ideas, making things, I reckon you'll really love 3D printing. Better yet, if you've got an outbuilding or a garage that you can set up a dedicated 3D printing space, you're going to have a lot of fun with this hobby and it encourages you to dive straight in. However, if you're on a tight budget or you don't have a dedicated space, it becomes a more difficult decision and one you've got to balance up. If you're not going to use it very much, you don't have a massive budget, then the costs and the extra barriers that are going to come into play are going to be bigger for you. And it might just be easier to go and just support your local gaming store and purchase the models or get the best of both worlds and just buy 3D printed models from services like PCBWay. If you have decided a 3D printer is right for you, here's my advice. Decide what you want it for. If you want to make terrain or useful parts, you're going to want an FDM printer. My favourite at the moment is the Creality K1C. It's fast, it's self-contained and prints loads of different materials really easily. If you want models, you're probably going to want a resin 3D printer. And here are some options. If you're a beginner on a budget, the new Mars 5 Ultra is amazing. It prints out of the box, it's under $300, because it's new fancy tilty vat thingy, you don't have to worry about as many settings, so it's easier to use. If you want a bigger build volume or a heater, then the GK2 by Uniformation is my pick. And if you have more budget or are on the cusp of being a prosumer, then the best printer on the market right now is the Haygears Ultracraft Reflex. I've got links to all the printers I talked about down below, as well as links to all their reviews too. And of course, links to this video sponsor PCBWay as well. If you enjoy content like this and want to see more of it, like and subscribe to the channel. And I would love you to join in the chat too, over on my Discord server, or if you're feeling particularly generous, supporting me over on Patreon for some added perks like free 3D printed models. So as ever, this has been Rising 8 Minis. I am incredibly grateful to everyone who does support me by watching these videos all the way through to the end. You're all legends. And yeah, I guess I'll see you next time.